People always joke about how we can nuke data centers if AI goes rogue, but have we really thought about the possibility they might actually be decentralized? The reality now is that not everyone can afford $1 billion for a data center, but that doesn't mean all hope is lost for the open source community. We can potentially overcome this with the power of friendship if everyone in the world contributes some compute to train a model across the internet, kind of like mining crypto, but potentially training a super intelligence instead. However, when you want to stretch the capability of a data center across the world, the privilege of having communication speed of 1.8 terabytes per second between GPUs is now limited by your internet speed, which is like 1,000 to 100,000 times slower. So the starting point is already a bit behind, not to mention the complicated process of synchronizing training updates with the model weights, which makes everything even more confusing, which I'll get to later in this video. But the people did not lose hope. A few months ago, News Research released a paper called Distro, which is a framework designed to improve the current methods of distributed training across the internet. In the technical report, they claimed that they were able to reduce data transmission needs by 3,000 times for pre-training and potentially up to 10,000 times for post-training with no signs of degradation in the model, which is insane. But at that time, people were skeptical of such optimistic results, especially because they hadn't shared exactly how they have achieved this. Until a few weeks ago, when another company called Prime Intellect released the first ever 10 billion parameters LLM model trained across the globe called Intellect One. This exciting news might have stirred something inside news research, prompting them to release their own progress on distributed training just a few days later. And what they shared wasn't just good news about this show, it was much more amazing than that. But before I dive into it, imagine a drive through experience where an AI agent can actually handle your order smoothly, even with cars honking, engines revving, and passengers debating their order in the backseat. Let me quickly share with you Speechmatic's latest new app called Flow. They made it possible to not only understand multiple speakers even if they are talking over each other, but respond in a way that sounds organic and less robotic. The app that's available on both the Play Store and the App Store lets you try this out yourself. Can you pretend to be a drive through at McDonald's real quick? Sure thing. Welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? Uh, can I have a uh, Burger King foot okay. lettuce? Sorry, we only have McDonald's items here. What would you like from our menu? Uh, okay, just just fries. All right, one order of fries. Anything else for you today? Actually, can we talk in Spanish? Claro, ¿qué más te gustaría ordenar? Ah, español muy bien. Uh, English, por favor. <laughs> sure, we can switch back to English. Anything else you'd like to add to your order? Uh, so if you're looking to build smart and natural voice applications, whether for drive throughs customer support, media production, or something entirely new, Flow will make it happen for you. Check it out using the link down in the description and start creating the next generation of voice experiences. And thank you Speechmatics for sponsoring this video. Anyways, if you know how crypto works, training AI models in a distributed setup is kind of similar. Each machine works independently, but syncs updates periodically like blockchain nodes aligning their ledgers. But the major the major difference is that in distributed AI training, machines work together to improve a shared model by combining updates, while in crypto, they only agree on a single record of transactions. This makes training AI much more complicated, as updates need to be combined and synchronized at every training step, which are typically performed within seconds in a data center but are now stretched to at least 1000 times slower across the internet. So reducing this bottleneck is the priority for distributed training. But since we can't change anything about the internet speed, the only the other alternative is to find some way to transmit less data over the bottleneck. And researchers have proposed a lot of different ways. Like this paper called Petals from Yandex published in March 2023, they designed the pipeline for distributed inference and fine tuning of LLMs by letting different people host parts of the model on their own devices over the internet. So since a model is composed of hundreds of transformer layers, you would then get one layer, he gets one layer, and she gets one layer, and now everyone can collectively run a super large model like Bloom 1. 176B, which typically needs GPUs that are worth around $100,000 to hold the entire model in its VRAM. But now, we would have the problem of sending the data between each layer as the connection now extends across the internet. So Petals uses techniques like compressing the data pass between layers, which also consequently reduces the size of the model's parameters by half. But to be honest, that is not really ideal. If you just want to run the model, compression is fine. However, if you want to train the model, you can't really 
manually compress it during training since it'll mess the process up. Which brings us to September 2024, where DeepMind proposed the LOCO, short for Distributed Low Communication. This is an approach to train LLMs across distributed systems. And unlike pedals, which reduces communication by splitting up the model layers, resulting in the need of compressing the entire data and the model, the LOCO relies on a key method called Federated Averaging. This is a strategy where each GPU unit trains its model independently for multiple steps before synchronizing by averaging weight updates. This minimizes communication without sacrificing precision, making it ideal for training rather than just inference. But the caveat here is that every GPU unit aka a worker needs to be able to hold its own copy of the model. This means that each worker requires a VRAM size sufficient to store the full model parameters. So even though the local can theoretically accommodate an RTX 3090 on one hand and an H100 on the other, it cannot reduce the minimal memory requirement below what is needed to hold the entire model, which means that each worker must load a full copy of the model during its local training process. However, it can accommodate GPUs with more VRAM by increasing their batch sizes. And since synchronization happens only periodically, each worker then completes its computations at its own pace without the need to wait for the others. So the recent release of Intellect 1 by Prime Intellect made an implementation of the loco called Open the Loco, which they have shared with everyone for free, shout out to them, and they train their 10 billion model across the world using Open the Loco, which is super cool. But on the other hand, news research looks like they have something to add on top of this. They figured that instead of syncing the entire model during training, which the loco still periodically does, what if they just focus on only sharing the fast moving parts of the optimizer's momentum? What that means is that when you train a model, an optimizer is the thing that adjusts the model's parameters like weights to make it better at the task it's learning. And the optimizer achieved this by using gradients, which is like a feedback score that is calculated by matching the model's predicted results against the actual answer, aka the ground truth, to show how much each parameter needs to change to reduce errors so it can generate pretty much like the ground truth next time. However, gradients can be noisy or inconsistent because not every ground truth is completely correct or suitable for learning, especially for things that doesn't have a perfect answer, so it can slow down the progress to create the ideal model. And this is where momentum comes in. It smooths out the updates by combining the current gradient with the direction of the previous updates. It's kind of like pushing a ball down the hill. Momentum helps the optimizer move more smoothly and consistently towards the goal, even over the holes on the ground or the obstacles, which are like the noisy gradients. So the researchers over at News proposed demo, which is short for decoupled momentum optimization. This method uses signal processing principles to decouple the momentums from the optimization process, separating them into slow and fast components. The slow components capture the long term, the gradual updates that don't need to be shared frequently, while the fast components represent immediate high priority changes that are critical for keeping the model aligned across workers. So demo focuses on sharing only these fast moving components, which are smaller and more compact, instead of synchronizing the entire model or the entire optimizer state. So each worker now technically only need the fast moving components to update the model, as the slow moving components can be computed locally. This drastically reduces the amount of data that needs to be communicated between workers, making demo a lot more efficient and bandwidth friendly. And interestingly, this is also the second time signal processing has been mentioned as of recent. The last time I mentioned it was in the attention mechanism, you can check it out if you're interested, and we're not done with demo yet. In its paper, they mentioned that under the condition of distributed training, it matches and sometimes even exceeds Atom W, which is known for its strong empirical performance and is also the current standard optimizer for training AI in terms of its end model quality. Well, you could say they are cherry picking the results, so Adam W seems not as good, but let me reassure you, with one of their co-authors being the original author of the Atom Optimizer, I think it should be safe to say that they know how to baseline their benchmark. So yeah, this is the latest update from News Research on their distro project, which stands for distributed training over the internet. At the time of me scripting this video, they are nearly done with their training run. And are we gonna talk about how insane the aesthetic this company has? Their website that monitors their distro training run just looks stunning. The same could be said about their blog post thumbnails. Not sponsored by the way. Anyways, I skipped quite a few papers and details today, so if you want to learn more about federated learning, definitely check out my paper collection over on my Patreon. You can also check out my newsletter where I cover the latest and the hottest paper in a weekly issue. Since there is way too much cool new research coming out left and right, you can find my favorite papers that I might not have time to make a video about on there. Thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Lachelius, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Miguelim, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shainer, 
Marcelo Ferreria, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.